Hey, everyone, welcome into the Sports Fanatic News NHL Team Preview Show. I'm Joe Borick, joined by the wonderful Steel Flyers and Pirlo Wisdom. As you can see, how are you two gentlemen doing? Oh, man, doing good. Doing well, doing well here as well. And this is going to be our Buffalo Sabres Team Preview Edition. So uh, what do you guys uh, feel? I'll just give you your uh, first uh, thoughts, basically your sprinkling thoughts on the Sabres, your two sprinkling thoughts to get uh, everyone's feet wet on the Sabres. I'll start with you, Pirla. What are your two know. first thoughts about the Sabres? So I'm sprinkling on people's feet at the moment. This is pretty good. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I like that. I like yeah. that. All right. Right on, right on. I was also wondering why I myself wasn't wonderful, but still was. But that's all right. It doesn't hurt or nothing. Uh, okay. So, yeah, um, the Sabres. Well, they brought in, they fired uh, Botterill and brought in Adams. I think that's the big thing first, right? It was a very yeah. surprising, very yeah. surprising move. Kevin Adams never was a uh, general manager before. Uh, very young um interesting move uh right off the bat on the surface it looks like again an owner that wants to have a puppet and do the same crap that he was doing before um uh you know what i mean like that's what it seems like it's happened in buffalo is that they have an owner there that likes to make a lot of the decisions and uh general managers end up taking the eventually becoming the scapegoat in their left out that's what it looks like to me i don't know if it's actually happening but we'll see if it happens here um, so they, the biggest thing that I'm seeing as a preview for the Buffalo Sabres after the moves that they made, like Taylor Hall, bringing in Taylor Hall for a one year, um, uh, bringing in Cody Eakin. I, I, I actually didn't mind that move for a, um, uh, maybe change of culture and stuff like that. Um, that was really the major moves that they made. They, they kind of went all in one basket hoping that their top nine could be fantastic enough to uh, get them into the playoffs this year. But as we look at the new divisions that just came out, um, you're looking at Buffalo yeah. going to be playing Boston, New York Islanders, Rangers, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and then, you know, a little Capitals. more improved, yeah. uh, at Capitals and a little more improved New Jersey Devils. Uh, I, I, yeah, no. I, it's just too bad. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Tell us how you really not, feel, Carlos. They were not a good rated team last year in Corsi 4 for our analytical uh, folks. Uh, they were 54 point, or 50.4%, excuse me, which ranked for 30th um, in the league uh, last year. Um, and their penalty kill, which is a key to having a successful team, was also ranked. 30th uh, in the league last year. So that's not going to lead to much success. And their trend lines are very weird. They're up and down. So the, they they trended to two years ago, they were at 76 points. They went up to 81. So uh, they hope maybe with the additions of Taylor Hall and uh, getting guys to fill out the lineup, as you said, and Eric Stahl now as a second line center. Cody Eakin's going to start as a third, but maybe a middle staff will be able to step up and fulfill that role as a third liner for you. That definitely has more skill than an Eakin type player. Um, but Steele, what are your sprinkling thoughts? Because those are pretty much uh, mine on this team. What are yours? All right, I'm sprinkling on here. Uh, I'm going to go with this. Eric Stahl and Jeff Skinner, can they go back to form? They, they brought Jeff Skinner in with a huge contract. Uh, okay. Um, I, I think that's a little bit overpayment on that, I think. Um, I, I would like to see what the, the Jack Eichel and the Taylor Hall combination brings. Um, that's that's the, the combos that I'm going to be looking at as those two particular combos. Um, putting those guys back together or putting those guys together especially Eric Stahl and Skinner. Um, Eric Stahl played with Skinner in his first two years, um, and those were pretty successful years for Skinner. We, you know, we talked about him a little bit in the open when he scored 30 goals in, in, in a year with, with Eric Stahl there as his line mate. So 
that to me is going to be the the big thing. Uh, the major change that they did with uh, the removal of the um, general manager and then the placement of Adams was one thing too that we that I never even thought about too. It was a great point. The other thing I have an, an issue with too is can their goaltending hold up? Uh, uh, Omar and Carter Hutton, or, or Hutton is, is that how you say that? Yeah, Hutton. Hutton. Button? Okay. Uh, was not very impressed with those guys uh, the, the past year. And that that to me is going to be my sprinkling. Uh, the Eric Stahl and, and, the, uh, and the Skinner and the Taylor Hall and the Eichel combos. And, and can the, and can the uh, goaltending stand up? Uh, yeah, how good all Mark does is obviously going to be key. Last year, he was uh, 17 and 14 with a 269. So he's definitely shown to be at least a league average um, starter at this point of his career. Just can he be more than that? And can Carter Hutton be a league average backup? Because you're going to need that in this type of season. Uh, be it 60 or 56 games, excuse me, it's still going to be a quicker pace season and you're going to want your backup to perform. He's had the eye surgery, so we're going to see if uh, that was the root of uh, all his issues there. And now he's actually able to regain uh, his form of being at least a league average goaltender as well, which is what he was before having those eyesight problems and really before going to the Sabres. So if he could really regain his form before he ended up on the team, that would be good for them. But that is a big if, so I do agree with you on that. I guess my um, next questions would be, uh, before we move on to anything on their current roster, what did we feel about them getting their top two picks, which are John Jason Paterka out of uh, Germany, and then they got another winger, both listed as right wingers in the draft, Jack Quinn uh, out of the Ottawa 67s, the OHL. Uh, what do we think of their draft, and who do we like as the better pick out of those two bunch? And I'll start with uh, Steele for this one. I'll I tell you what. Uh, we were kind of all scratching our Look, when we did the draft show, and we were all kind of scratching our head when they picked Quinn uh, number eighth overall. Um, I think he's going to be the, the better of the bunch in my opinion, because, because of his shot that we talked about before the show, because of his, his shooting ability, it's going to be interesting to see how he develops. Look, either way you slice it, I think both of these players are at least two years away, at the very least. That makes like, sense. I, don't, I don't think you're going to see either one of these two guys at least for two years. At least for two years, and I think that I, I think that Quinn's going to be the to be the better one out of all of them because of his hammer shot, you know, because of his shoot first mentality, his kind of playmaking ability. Um, he's a little bit on the you know diminutive side, five eleven, hundred and but he's a thick five eleven though, like he's one hundred and eighty pounds, you know. So that's a thicker five eleven than than like if he was say one hundred and sixty pounds and five eleven. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> that's going to help him, I think. And then it's just going to be interesting to see how he goes. Uh, I, but I, that's what I think is uh, is Quinn's going to be the be- the better one out of both of them. Yeah, um, that's certainly what you would hope, considering uh, one was the first round talent they picked in Jack Quinn, and the other was the second round talent they picked in JJ. Yeah, uh, yeah, but Paterka. second rounders do tend so, to be. Oh no, sometimes that happens. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Other way, I'm just saying. Ideally, you would hope. That is what happened if you're the team. Um, I do think uh, Paterka is going to be a good play. He's really a versatile player that you can put anywhere. He's supposed to be one of those Swiss mm-hmm. Army, do it, aggressive skater type players coming over from Germany. And we saw, obviously, Dreisaitl opened up the gates uh, with Germany, really. And now we have a decent amount of talent. Stutzla, of course, early in the draft. Yeah. So uh, coming over from playing in the German league, so uh, and I even think the German leagues have played really well too. You know what I mean? Like they've uh, when we had the lockout season, that's where Danny Briere and uh, and Giroux went was the German league. So I mean, the German league is no slouch anymore now. I mean they're they're getting to be they're putting out some good talent now. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then uh, Pirlo, what are your thoughts uh, on their draft? And do you agree with Steele that? 
Jack Quinn is the guy that has a better chance to turn out. He's the, of course, goal scorer of the bunch. He's more, will his size and will his skating catch up to an NHL level to combine with his size to go with the shot to become the elite goal scorer rather than just a 15 to 20 goal scorer? That's a nice player to have. So what do you think of their draft? That's really up in the air. He's fairly raw. Like Steele says, he's probably two years away, maybe even three. Based um, he's got all the tools, um, but they're not all in the toolbox yet by any stretch. <laughs> and, uh, and that's kind of why I didn't really like the pick to begin with, but we won't go too far into that. But with Paterka, by the way, is getting 16 points in 12 games in the German League this year, which mm-hmm. is pretty fantastic, actually, for a kid yeah, very good. Yeah. So um, I'm not, I wouldn't be shocked if Paterka ended up be, being the better player in this, this uh, deal. In between these two, but the upside of Quinn, I get it because the upside is so tasty. <laughs> Quinn yeah. can be uh, a Hoffman, maybe even more than a With Hoffman. some defense uh, ability. He's yeah. got defensive ability. You add some defensive ability to Hoffman, and that's what he his his ceiling could be. I don't see Paterka's ceiling that high. Paterka's probably. You know, his ceiling is probably a 50-point guy, plays great two-way game, gives you everything he's got every game, and can play several positions. A great utility guy. Um, Awesome to have on any team. Likely will play one way or another. Um, his, his, His low side would probably be a fourth liner or a guy that, you know, goes in and out of the lineup into AHL or something of that nature. But, um... I, I do like Paterka a lot. I did like that pick. I uh, wasn't a big fan of Quinn. Not because I'm not a big fan of Quinn. And I know, Jack, you're watching, and you're probably – I hurt your feelings a little bit here. But – because uh, why wouldn't you be, right? Uh, <laughs> so uh, – but it's not because it's – he's not a great talent. It's not that. It's just the position that the opportunity that they had there to get a Rossi or uh, – especially a Rossi who Minnesota picked right after that, yeah. um, was, to me, just a mistake. And uh, we'll see. I mean, I hope Quinn proves me wrong. If he turns out to be that 40-goal Hoffman that can play both ways, maybe like uh, a Pacioretty, you know, but smaller yeah. ver- smaller version of Pacioretty, some- something like that. Well, you know, then- he's also young too, man. Well, of course he's young. Yeah, but that's the point is I think yeah, there was players 19, that had – I think there were players that were more for sure's to be great yeah. players in that spot. I think this was a little high risk for that eighth spot, but yeah. he's he's going to be playing beside Eichel down the road, hopefully. Uh, that that can make a team and make a player really darn good really quick. So correct, well, yeah, uh, exactly. Um, yeah, Key is uh, playing alongside a Jack Eichel um, and whoever you hope is going to develop. That's why a Casey Middlestad I brought up earlier developing is key because. Eric Stahl's not going to play forever. He's now your second line center. You would hope a Dylan Cousins or a middle stat until somebody is able to emerge or you sign somebody else, uh, but they don't have really the cap flexibility to do so. So you really hope those guys can emerge more as a second liner to take over for Eric Stahl in this season. I think that's, uh, for me, one of their uh, biggest keys. But my next question and one of our uh, final questions Two questions, I guess I'll say, uh, would be for everything to get. This is a two part question. So we'll start with uh, the bad, I guess. For everything to go bad, what do you think would unfortunately happen for the Sabres this year? And then follow that up by making everybody feel good about themselves with your answer for. For everything to go right, what would have to happen uh, for the Buffalo Sabres this year? I'll start with you, Pierre on this one. Well, that was a great question, by the way. And, uh, it was uh, that's a great lean to to how to look at the season going forward. Um, so we're going to start with the bad. How how things could all go rotten? Uh, well, first of all, just they could be put in the division they're in. So there's one that already yeah. did go rotten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just not starting off good, are they? It's not started <laughs> off well. But Taylor Hall has been known to be a bit of a mouthpiece in the room. Uh, him and Jack Eichel don't hit it off. 
Uh, they have similar personalities that could butt heads with each other quite a bit. So let's say to go bad, that actually happens and uh, the energy in the room falls off and you're in big trouble there. The Eric Stahl coming in uh, is thing uh, coming in for basically like uh, um, Steele said is uh, to help out Skinner. That seems to be the biggest reason why they brought in Eric Stahl there, and I do think it was a good move. But if if uh, if Skinner's nine million dollar minus of what it, I think it has a lot to do with having nine million dollars, and all of a sudden I don't need to go in those areas and hurt myself anymore. Philosophy isn't penetrated by Eric Stahl slapping upside the head every time he does it. Then that could go really wrong. And again, create some serious energy problems in the room there. Um, besides that, Cody Eakins fallen off. If that had, had fell off last year, if that's a sign of things to come, now you're looking at a issue with your third line center spot. And uh, Tage Thompson has not progressed all that well in his career so far. If that continues, Cousins isn't ready, and uh, Casey Middlestat doesn't ever produce anywhere near they thought they were going to this roster is dead last which i'll you're probably going to say what the positive ask me what the positive is too so i'll leave that till afterwards um darlene uh the if the defense plays like it did last year big trouble if linus allmark doesn't step up as steel says big trouble if all of those things happen, you're looking at a team that's probably somewhere in the bottom of the league or worse. Uh, so that would be the bad in all of those. Uh, are you asking me the positive too, Joe? Uh, at first, uh, I'll let Steele give what his bad is, then we'll go to your sure. positive. And sure. what he said. Yeah, yeah, what he yeah. said. No, <laughs> I, I'm going to focus in on uh, Dahlani. Deh or Dahlan, Dahlin, 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 yeah. He's he's uh, very young, and a lot of pressure is going to be put on his shoulders to show up. Okay, with the expanded rosters uh, coming up, with the uh, with the uh, you know the travel team or the you know whatever, they're going to need those people. Um, and I think that's what's going to happen here. I think because of the the additions that Buffalo has made, I think they're not going to be able to come out of the gates um, as quickly as some of the other teams that haven't made some of these major uh, adjustments to their lineup. Okay. And so that to me is if it's going to go all wrong in the beginning and it just keeps on in the snowballs, that's how it could just go all wrong for them. They have – some potential to do something here with the guys on this team. Like I said, the, the goalies are my only real major question mark. And then if we can get, if we can see Jeff Skinner be even remotely worth $9 million a year, then okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, and if we can get, you know, the Taylor Hall to come in and play and be that person with Jack Eichel and be that, Extra, you know, because look, their their whole team is basically Jack Eichel, and everything has to go through him. So yeah. when you take that away, guess what? <laughs> yeah, that's why you bring in a Taylor Hall to hope he shows exactly. up. Exactly. Like a couple years exactly. ago. So, the other exactly. Back. So if it goes wrong, then that's where it's going to go wrong. Right there. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll, I'll go with that. That's my that's my worst case scenario. How's that? Gotcha. You already kind of got into what you would do for your best case scenario too. Um, in well, your, you know, well, you know that. Um, but um, I think uh, for them, their best case is obviously if Linus Allmark uh, is able to progress from uh, his last season. He had the two six nine. A uh, Carter Hudden needs to just show he can be a decent backup because the only other guy they have is that Johansson kid who is just an average, uh, so far as proven mm -hmm. to be an average goaltender per mm -hmm. in general, not in the NHL yet. So, um, and then Pekka Lukan is not close to ready yet. So the key is how their goaltending does. If Pekka Lukanen can also develop in the minors. So you have more 
calmness about your goaltending going forward as well. Um, but then you also uh, have guys that you need to have, like you brought up, step up. Uh, I think uh, Dylan Cousins is a guy I wouldn't be shocked if he makes a team because he can start on the fourth line and develop, where middle stats a guy that you need to have in your top line, or top nine, excuse me, if he's going to play because he's not a guy that can really play on your bottom line. He's going to get knocked around. Where Dylan Cousins is a big guy, he's going to be able to play yeah. wherever you put him. Stand in there. If yeah. you, and if you're going to play your fourth line enough, um, if they actually put certain guys – like uh, Asplund, who actually played well last year down there, and maybe uh, even Tage Thompson to start now with the addition of Tobias Ryder, if he's a third or fourth liner, depending how much play Ocposo gets, uh, you have some flexibility there and actually players that are decent fourth liners around him. So I wouldn't be surprised if they develop him that way. I think in order for them to be the best, though, they need someone to take over for Cody Eakin between a Cousins or a Middlestat or a Thompson, which is probably the less likely source, but somebody to be that third-line center since Eric Stahl can be a pushing, but still can be a second-line guy, especially with guys he's already comfortable with like Skinner or have Reinhardt yeah. and Olsen yeah. of Skinner. So I think it's all about their third-line center and goaltending to have a deep enough lineup to compete with this heck of a division uh, that they're ended up being put in this year with uh, obviously Boston, the Flyers, the both New York teams, uh, Pittsburgh, Washington. Uh, so that's a division that's going to be hard to go up against. But if all that happened, I think they'll be able to be okay. The way that they're going to struggle is if their defense – like uh, Pirlo hit it right on the head, struggles again. And if Darlene does not develop like they hope and starts to be a guy that sputters a bit, which I don't think would do, but that's a way that uh, they'll be able to struggle if he starts to sputter because he's a big key because they don't have a no. consistent defense. They have guys like uh, Monters on one more year of his contract. Miller, uh, you have McCabe, obviously, who's a pretty decent defenseman, actually. Um, and then uh, Yokoharu needs to actually be able to do something for them as well. They're really banking on guys that have not been experienced top four guys young. and young. So they need to progress there. And if that doesn't happen, that's going to be the bane of their existence, their ability for their goaltenders to not be the elite of the elite that's going to save your defense and their defense. But if their goaltending provides and their defense provides and they have a third liner emerge, I think that's going to be their keys to um, success. But um, Steve, you never said, uh, Steve, a.k.a. Pirlo, what the heck your uh, projections were for them doing good yourself. Um, so uh, we'll let you know there. Uh, so what are your projections for that since Steele kind of did a double whammy on uh, his answer of uh, bad and good? So uh, I think for them, I mean, it's not like impossible for Buffalo just to light it up and be a surprise team this year. There's no doubt about that. Um, Sam Reinhardt is, is now reached that point where he's going to be on his peak year. This is a 26-year-old year. We haven't great even talked point. about that yet. Yeah, great uh, point. He could be hitting an absolute peak here. If that line of Hall, Eichel, and Reinhardt connect, could be the best line in the league. You know, one of the top three best lines in the league. Really, really could. Um, they could be putting down, you know, com competing with Boston, with Pasternak and Bergeron, and yeah. Colorado there with uh, uh, McKinnon, uh, Landis Gog, and Randon. So that would be fantastic. If Stahl does get everything they can out of Skinner and Skinner comes back to be a 40 goal scorer again with Olison on his right side, who's already shown to be a 30 goal scorer. Now you've got a top six that rivals anybody in the league. So yeah. it's not, I mean, there's a lot of things great that could happen here. Also, we haven't even mentioned somebody who I love, 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 love. Ralph Kruger is their coach. And I think Ralph Kruger is one of the best co hockey minds in the world. So I think there could be, a, there's a, I put a lot of trust in him to be able to get a lot of the best here as well. Um, uh, Gergensen's Eakin, Tage Thompson, Tage Thompson, man, his, we talked about all the tools, but not the toolbox. If he gets the toolbox this year, he, he you've got a, not a bad third line. And, 
um, you saw, you mentioned Cousins. He's going to be in the World yeah. Junior Championships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he's flying out of the gate, their top, their top, their forward lineup could be absolutely fantastic. If it's spun the right way and everything hits yep. perfect, it could be fantastic. It's true. Um, and, and you know what, though, you know what, Perlo, that might actually that might actually overtake their weakness on defense and goaltending. Could, if they could, could just out bloody score you every pretty night. Much, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. But on the defense, um, I like Henri Yokoharu. I think he can play in a top two role. And if he can take that spot from Ristolainen this year, I think Ristolainen would be a much better position to be playing down lower. Uh, not playing against top competition all the time to build his competition confidence back. He'd then be able to play against play with a guy like Jake McCabe, who is a more solidifying defensive person. Uh, so I think that would work out really well that way. I'm really rooting for Brandon Montour this year. I don't know what was going on in his life or what's been happening with that kid. He's not a kid anymore either. He's 26 years old. But he was thought of to be much better than he was when they brought him into Buffalo, and it hasn't panned out. So if that energy from the forwards go, you know, trickles energy down into over. this defense, Linus Allmark um, has all the skill, as you know, Joe. It's not like Linus Allmark doesn't have skill. He's a big boy. He has. Um, it's just a case of getting that positioning in the right place. And when he, if he hits it, if he really hits it this year, and we've seen goaltenders hit it at 27, 28, this team could be a rock. Actually, it's, it's, it's. There's a lot of coulds though, and that's what I'm a little bit afraid of. But I'm <laughs> a lot of ifs. I, I still put a negative at the end of the positive. Positive. That is what happened. If that all happens, they could be middle of this division and make the playoffs this year. It's it's very possible. So that's my positive on, on the whole team yeah. aspect. Yeah, energy usually is a key factor for continuing success. You have to get that momentum and continue to carry that momentum and energy throughout. And it probably is more likely, as you highlighted, to trickle from the uh, offense than the defense when it comes to Buffalo. And maybe the goaltending, if Walmart really hits his peak, if you start getting those really big money saves, that also gets your momentum going as well. But I think that about uh, wraps it up for us. Uh, we're hitting the 30-minute uh, mark here which is what we want to keep all these two with our guests. But uh, did you guys have any closing thoughts on the Buffalo Sabres? I think the last thing we should do is say we have a 56-game season. Ceiling-wise, Steel, what do you think their win total is ceiling-wise? I believe in a 56-game season, what would that be? 28 games, I think, would be the 500 mark. If I'm yeah, correct, that's right. Oh. Yeah, 20 yeah. games. Uh, they will be below, but in the and only because of the division that they're going to be in. Okay, I I feel that they have an opportunity to do something really good here. I just if they stumble out of the gate, then it's just going to snowball, and I think they'll. I think they're going to finish lower than middle of the pack. I think they're just going to be at the end because there's too much. There's too much better. There's yeah, too much better. There's teams better ahead of them, I think. Not just on paper, but what they've done in the past. Look, this is what, what we get to judge Buffalo with is what we saw from them last year, and they've made some moves. They did some things, and we get to see what they're going to be like, you know. And I think you're going to be able to tell the first fifteen games of the season. I think you're going to be able to tell if teams are going to be able to have it together or not. And I just. I'd love to see Buffalo do something positive. I'd love to see Buffalo make a, a shot at it. I just have a hard time thinking they're going to get above 500. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense because of some of the uh, weaknesses uh, we pointed out. I'm interested to hear what, uh, here, though, your take is on the Sabres and what you think their ceiling is for your win total for them. I think they'll get about maybe – it's it's uh, 56 games, so 28. I'll get. I think they'll get about 23, 22 wins, something like that. I think it's going to be between them and Pittsburgh on who's second last in this division. So that's that's what I th that's what I I think. Uh, if if taking it from what I've seen, so I, I got to see something different from this team, and uh, and and all the things that Steele said about 
having bringing in a guy like a big uh, ego like Hall in a shortened season and trying to have figure all that out. That's a lot to ask for a team that wasn't doing very well last year. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what I think. I think they're going to be second last, third last in this division, in this conference. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say around mid twenties uh, is probably their highest. Uh, ish win total which would be then around the 500 mark if you can get to the mid 20s um they they're a team that just got put in a really tough division they showed progression the last couple years in terms of moving up the point tier a little bit each year but they just got put in a hard place this year uh with the way things got constructed so i think that's around where they're going to be um, I do think um, it'll be interesting uh, who finishes down there with them if they do finish in the bottom three because Pittsburgh could, uh, but that would mean Jersey would have to over, uh, would actually have to perform up to their expectations. So we'll leave that for uh, when we do videos on each of those teams, but that's just a little inkling uh, on those teams right now. So this has been First Fanag News Buffalo Sabres team preview. We thank Steel Flyers and Pirlo Wisdom for joining us. Check out steelflyers.com and check them out on Twitter as well, where gentlemen share your Twitter right now. Pirlo, what's yours? Uh, Pearl of Wis- or Pearls of Wisdom. Uh, geez, I can't even remember. You put me on the spot. <laughs> Pearl's <laughs> NHL. Pearl's NHL POW. There you go. There you go. Mine's easy. Yeah. Steel Flyers fifty two. And, and uh, mine's at JJ Boric twenty six. Have a great and safe day, everyone. Peace out.